Our next caller is Arandu from Arizona. Arandu, how can we help you? Hey, what's up, Sal? What's up, man? So, I have a question for you guys. I guess uh, I've always been prone to injuries, <laughs> is the nice way to put it. I currently have a shoulder injury and a hip injury. But, I mean, I think I've hurt every joint in my body. Just, I don't, I, I don't know why. I guess from having the wrong movements is what you guys say. Uh, so, I hurt myself doing, uh, I don't even know what I was doing, honestly. I think it was deadlifts, maybe. Maybe sled pushes is right now. What's really killing me is my hip flexor. Um, I actually couldn't walk for a few days. I iced it, and then it was good. Uh, it's been a few weeks since, and now I can walk, but I'm scared to go back to the gym. Um, I just started doing uh, Maps Prime Pro. Now, uh, there has been one other time that I started doing that, and it felt like um, the injury actually came back, and it was doing. Um, I had thrown out my back, and I was. I think I did windmills. Windmills. And um, it hurt my back again. So I was wondering if um, you guys have any, I know you guys aren't doctors or anything, but I, I'd appreciate you guys' advice as um, like, should I rest or should I jump back into Maps Prime Pro? Uh, it has been a few weeks and I can walk now, but uh, after like a full day of work, I know my hip will be inflamed. Uh, I've been trying to do... Um, I do 90 90s, you know, and I, my thoracic spine mobility is not the best because I'll wake up and it's really uh, aggravated. So, uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Well, okay. So, a few things that I'm hearing. Uh, one is that you, you sounds like you said you're, you're prone to injury. You've injured yourself quite a few times and you are trying to figure out how to prevent that from happening again. And then the second thing you said was, I did a mobility movement, but I hurt my back doing it. So what this tells me is a couple different things. One, I think you should focus on improving your movement patterns for a long time. I think you should give yourself at least six months of just learning how to move better. But there's one other thing I'd like to add, which is start to listen to your body, right? So you, can you hurt yourself doing a mobility movement? Of course you can. If you push yourself past the point of your control and your stability and your mobility, so what that means is you're going to have to approach these things a little bit more carefully and err on the side of caution, all right? So when you're doing these movements, ooh, that feels a little bit tight. Okay, don't go that far. Find the edge and play with the edge, but don't go past the edge. But I definitely think you should make this your entire focus for at least six months, okay? Because the pain going away doesn't mean you're done, right? Oftentimes when you hurt yourself... There's a, there's, a, there's a lot of things that happened until you hurt yourself. So just because the pain goes away doesn't mean that the salute, the problem has been solved. I'm, I'm hearing a potential strong anterior pelvic tilt. That's what it sounds like to me. When you feel the hip flexor is really inflamed and tight like that, you got low back stuff that's going on. Have you taken the MAPS Prime uh, zone test? Have you done that? I haven't done the zone tests. Okay. I know uh, since I had injuries, I kind of just jumped straight into Maps Prime Pro. Um, oh, the, so, yeah. I mean, I, I I would encourage you to do the test just because I'd like to see where where this breakdown is happening the most. Are, are you, so an anterior pelvic tilt looks like where your, your, your hips are rotated. It almost looks like you're sticking your butt out a little bit and you have a, 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 a more of an excessive arch in the low back. Do you know if you have this? Yeah, I've heard I've heard you talk about uh, yours. I've kind of been trying to fix my gait because it feels like as soon as I wrote, I mean, to fix it, I kind of just, uh, you know, br uh, brace my core, I guess, and uh, rotate my knees and, and that'll fix it. But, I mean, I can only re remember to do that like for 30 seconds and I'm sure it goes back. I'm just unaware of it. But, yeah, I do have one. So, yeah, what I, what I want you to do is to, to lay down on the on the ground on your back bend your knees at about 45 degrees and then see how much of a gap you have between your low back and the and the floor. If you can reach all the way under there with your hand all the way into your forearm, you probably have this very similar to I do. And and some of that is is core control, right? And core strength, so working on that so the back presses on the ground. Uh, and then, of course, like doing like the hip flexor deactivator uh, exercise that Sal's taught on the YouTube channel. But I would go through the the prime the prime zone test 
and see where you're, you're, you, you have the greatest challenge. If you see that when you go to do like a windmill, like you have a hard time performing the movement with no weight or anything, just performing the movement, then I would stick with all the exercises and fortification sessions that are around those zones. So more than likely you're going to have breakdown in windmill and more than likely you're going to have breakdown in the squat. That's what I'm guessing from what I'm hearing. And MAPS Prime actually guides you in like what movements you should be primarily doing. And I would be doing mostly that. And any sort of training I'm doing would be focused around mobility and stability type training. Yeah, I would I would definitely regress. It just sounds a lot like, you know, you really need to get in tune with body control. Uh, and, and, and really like take your time with each joint. And, and so Prime Pro is great for that in terms of, um, you know, understanding joint function, understanding, uh, you know, your range of motion, where your limitations lie. Sal kind of talked about the thresholds. So you're going to find sticking points. You're going to find areas where either you feel like, oh, I, I can't have access to that. So it's too loose or, or it's too tight and too restrictive. And then there's a pain signal. You need to pay attention to all that and then find that threshold try and stay close to that threshold and really squeeze your muscles, squeeze your body, try to connect to that. So then now you can start teaching your body that you have stability. You, you have regained that ability to, uh, you, you know, really control your body in that position. Uh, then we build off of that. It's, it's, it's really not going to be advantageous for you to, to focus on, you know, adding load to any of these movements for a while. Okay. Um, so are you, you guys are saying I should do Maps Prime Pro and Maps Prime? Maps Prime, do the fortification sessions that uh, that are in the program. That's your workouts. Um, do the tests that are in there so you can find the best movements for you in Maps Prime. And then use Maps Prime Pro to supplement with joint-specific right. movements. And do this for a while. Give yourself a good amount of time where you're just focusing on this because it sounds to me like it's going to take a good, a good six months before – you can get back into the more heavy traditional resistance training. And then even when you actually start back into your resistance training, I would caution you to not be really pushing the weight, right? Really, I would do some stuff like Justin was suggesting earlier, like isometric stuff and really controlling the tempo, slow and control. Like you just need to, you need, your focus needs to be around control, stability, perfect the form, a lot of unilateral type stuff. So when you do transition out of prime and prime yeah. pro movements, I would, and you start to get back to like traditional weight training. I would do a lot of unilateral stuff. I would do a lot of stability control. Don't think about loading the bar like crazy. Think more about perfecting yeah. reps. The form. Literally, don't matter to you at this point. Like it's all about quality and intent of what you're doing with your body. So if you can get into that mindset, you're going to be a lot better off. Okay. All right. So I think what I'll do is uh, I'll probably. So I had already told myself this, but because, um, yes, it, you guys are hitting the nail on the head. Um, it feels like uh, I hurt myself like really bad. You know, last time I was benching, I hurt my shoulder and I couldn't move it. And I think a month later I was already benching because it felt better. But obviously I hurt it. Mm -hmm. um, so like Sal said, I, I guess I have to go longer than when it feels OK. So I gave myself till 2022 before I touch a weight. I really just want to focus on my mobility. And uh, it's good to know that I can also um, intertwine Prime with Prime Pro. Excellent. Yep. yep. So, all right. So, Thanks, yeah. Thanks Thank for you calling. Guys. No Sounds problem. Good. Yeah, that's a that's a rough one. I think people think that when the pain is gone, the problem is solved. Yeah, everything's okay. No, you've solved the problem enough to get rid of the pain, but the problem is probably still there and it will cause pain again. Mm -hmm. You got to go past that point. Yeah. What's the root of it? And I think that's why it is very much of a, a you know, it's a hard thing to do to really like regress and kind of pinpoint it back down to, uh, you know, what angle, what, you know, what function mm -hmm. uh, of movement is it specifically that's, you know, it, the stemming, uh, you know, and where that pain is stemming from. Well, this is also why, you know, in-person training is so valuable too, because, yeah. you know, we're guessing right now, like it, it's hard to say without really seeing the way he moves, I'd be able to give him way more specific answers. Totally. Of like I want you to do this exercise and this exercise based off of watching him move. But 
having him try and articulate what he feels or thinks is wrong and then us try and troubleshoot and guess what we think is wrong right. yeah. is really, really difficult, you know, because when I hear really tight hip flexors, I hear someone's low back bother them all the time. I default, I think, anterior pelvic tilt. Right. I, it's, right. you know, close to home for me. Those are my issues. And I know, too, that if I were to go load windmills in, in a very in a position like that with an anterior pelvic tilt and rotate like that. Right. And rotation is another one that's very much of an exposing type of a movement yes. to any like yeah, inadequacies, you know, up the kinetic chain. So, you know, it's just those things. And then the shoulder injury, all these types totally. of things. We just need to address a lot. There. Yeah.